Now, a lot of people would refer to you as a conservative Indigenous activist. I'm not sure if you uh, like that term, but um, uh, your activism, it's made you uh, a target of the, the left uh, in the uh, f major cities. Um, you know, there, there's the you know, usual uh, accusations, they call you, you know, a puppet of white people. There's also the term uh, coconut. Um, you know, how do you respond to sort of, you know, these you know, ac accusations? Because they're basically saying that, you know, your views are not your own. Um, yeah, I guess I scare people a lot in that <laughs> in that aspect. Uh, I've always had the, had the attitude since I was a teenager, I think, um, which I think has allowed me to walk on stage and perform it as I have, that I really couldn't care less what people thought of me. Um, you know, when people call names, um, they're incapable of actually arguing or debating uh, any of the points that I raise. So, you know, it's a weakness on their behalf and it says a lot more about them as individuals than it does of me. And I guess if I'm not, you know, um, if, if I, I'm not having people, you know, <laughs> speak out against me in, in such a capacity, then I mustn't be doing something right. Um, yes, people call names, um, try to pigeonhole me because I confuse them. I confuse the left because, yes, I'm an Aboriginal woman, but hey, I'm also half white fella too. That's what people forget is that uh, I'm human, funny enough. I'm human. In fact, we're all human. Surprise, surprise. Um, <laughs> um, well, I guess, you know, what it points out is that really um, these idiots think that uh, because I'm an Aboriginal woman, I should be acting and behaving and thinking uh, in the way that they think I should. Um, why should I be an individual and, and step out of those stereotypes that they've created for me? Um, because I've got a brain of my own and I can think for myself, in fact, and what I present are the facts. What I present is the truth. What I present is my knowledge on traditional Aboriginal culture, the culture that I was grown, gr brought up with. I know my jukurpa, I know my, my skin name, I know my language. I know all of those things uh, and those who attack me are uh, insecure about not knowing those sorts of things for themselves. Um, for me, you know what, it's like, well, I'm a bit like the blob. They can shoot whatever, they can fire at me whatever they like. I will just keep growing. I don't back away. Um, again, I speak for those who don't have a voice. I stand up for the marginalised. Um, I don't stand up to try and stamp on the marginalised. I stand up for them and I will continue to do so regardless uh, of the sorts of attacks I get because for every person that attacks me, there's about 20 other people who are there with their hand out supporting me who understand what common sense is and understand the need for the truth to be told. Why do the left, they why do they feel the need to capture uh, the the issue of uh, indigenous welfare. I mean, uh, as we spoke about before, most of them are based in you know the inner inner cities. Some of them have you know never been to you know Alice Springs or uh, a remote uh, community. They have no idea about you know what are the issues uh, on the ground. They don't want to hear about you know their um, you know uh, domestic violence uh, and abuse. Why, why do they feel the need to you know Im impose you know their what what they think is going on when in reality they've they've just got no idea about uh, the situation. They want to feel important. They want to feel as though they're contributing in some way. But um, what they don't realise is because of their ignorance and lack of understanding and lack of education and lack of um, actual life lived in remote communities. Um, they're actually they're contributing to the demise of Aboriginal people. They're keeping Aboriginal people uh, in a stereotype that we're victims and that we're helpless, and the white man is the evil enemy who keeps who keeps us down. Uh, and so they're doing us a disservice by feeding you know lies, but trying to prop themselves up um, to make themselves feel better because guilt politics has got, has got a stranglehold on them because they listen to the activists. And what the activists do is 
they, in order to make themselves feel better about their insecurities, they project their insecurities onto others. Uh, they make others feel bad in order to make them feel good. And these, what the left has done, ha, that is, they've bought into this guilt politics. And guilt politics doesn't work. It's stifling. It it, it, it doesn't help um, anybody, and, um, especially Aboriginal people. Uh, and, and, and really, you know, they want to have an opinion. They want to have an opinion that's heard within, you know, within the grand scheme of things. But they feel like that if they say, oh, well, you know, well, it was white people that did this to Aboriginal people in the first place. What they're doing is taking away the fact that we are human beings ourselves. We are capable human beings. We are capable of all um, that it means to be human. Back in the day before white fellas came, we fought our traditional enemies. We murdered, we raped, we pillaged, we did all of those sorts of things because we were human beings. White fellas, this other tribe came along, uh, they were stronger than us. And unfortunately, we lost the war. Um, however, many of us now have mixed heritage. We are all human beings with, with a history that's not very nice and a history that we all need to learn and understand uh, in, in, in all of its entirety. Um, for, for example, here in, here in Alice Springs, we had the Coniston Massacre, which took place in 1928, and my grandfather was an adolescent when this happened. He was 30 kilometres um, running away from the killings going on with his close family. Uh, now, we commemorated 75 years. Um, this is about 11 years ago. And um, what happened was we invited the descendants of the killers to that commemorative ceremony, and we said, we want you to be there because we don't want you to feel guilt or we don't want to blame you for what literally your grandfather did to our people. But we want to recognise that these were very difficult times in our history. You know, we were killing our traditional enemies. They were trying to kill us. White fellas were trying to kill us. We tried to kill white fellas. Um, and it was complex. And one of, one of the worst killers amongst that posse were in fact uh, was in fact an Arunda man from the Arunda tribe. So Aboriginal people were part of that as well. It's really, it's not as straightforward as black against white and white against black. And if you look at us now, <laughs> if you look at our, our own heritage, the fact that we are, so many of us, of mixed heritage, it's plain and simple. It's not as straightforward as black and white. We are mixed up human beings with lots of complexities and we don't recognise that and the left doesn't recognise that. The left pigeonholes everybody in a particular way to suit their own way of thinking and their own um, narrative and it doesn't work. It really doesn't work and it's not working clearly because the situation for Aboriginal people hasn't changed. I can't believe we're in this situation now where you're accused of being racist when you say you know things are you know not good uh in indigenous communities there's still uh, a lot of problems and uh for the left they still you know say that you know our government is you know still being you know discriminatory and racist when there's been a bipartisan approach to you know the reconciliation project for the you know past 50 years uh you know there's been numerous government bodies uh, established to uh, look after uh, indigenous issues of course we had the apology to the stolen generation we're going through this process of uh, constitutional uh, recognition so it's not that our governments haven't tried look absolutely you know um, again over and over again I think the word racist um, has lost its meaning I think it's just thrown out anything that any Aboriginal activist doesn't agree with now. Uh, yes, our government have tried. They have tried. And the one thing that we will, that we can see through this pattern over time is the fact that the lack of accountability has in fact come from Aboriginal people ourselves. Our people are suffering. We must drive the change within ourselves as individuals, within our families, within our wider communities, we must do more and stop expecting the government to. On one hand, we're saying, oh, 
we don't want the government to tell us what to do. But on, on the other hand, we've got our hand out going, well, we need resources to do this. We need resources to do that. This is why our people are not, uh, you know, are still marginalised because the government's not doing enough. We're expecting the government to parent our children, and then and now we're saying that we're we're scared of creating another stolen generation. However, what's going on with the parents? What's going on with the families? You know, these children should have the same rights as all other Australian children, but they don't. <laughs> and it's because our families are dysfunctional and aren't able to care for these kids. So the emphasis is put on the fact that we need to put them into kin care. And so what happens then is you're taking kids from a dysfunctional situation, possibly into another dysfunctional situation. We wonder why this situation isn't getting better. It's not because of racism. And if we keep throwing out, you know, projecting the racism word, well, the government's just going to go, you know what, completely hands off, hands off. <laughs> and in fact, that's what's going on with kids in foster care. They're going hands off. Where it's created a stigma because of the stolen generation about how we deal with Aboriginal kids now, and now they're being removed at even more alarming rates um, than they have been. It's not a stolen generation. These kids are genuinely in circumstances where they should have the ability to have the same rights as any other Australian child. Oh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just so frustrating that the race card is used so often these days, it's become ridiculous. Accountability, taking responsibility, maybe if we try those, because that's doing something different to what's gone on in our country's history where governments have tried to solve our problems. No, we need to solve our problems. We need to take responsibility. We need to admit um, our part within the problem in order to be able to solve the problem. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.